Hey, what's going on, everyone? What up, what up? It's your girl, Miss DJ Hoodie, getting at you guys with another Y Run Podcast Live here in LA. And up on panel with me, we got the most famous, the most sexiest, Rex Moon. Just right. Boo. <laughs> Ain't no boo. Call me Chef Rob. <laughs> yeah, he's cooking right now and it smells bomb. Did you put seasoning in it? Yeah. What kind of seasoning? Uh, adobo, salt, uh, what was it? Lemon. Lemon. The secret ingredient. Yeah, we're not telling. We're not telling that one. <laughs> You'll tell me though, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will taste it when you put it in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Put it in my mouth. Um, <laughs> you can uh-huh. say that part. No. <laughs> but you can, though. We're going to try and keep this one PG. Mm-hmm. I'll try. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> I already messed it up. How? <laughs> well, I said the secret ingredient. Oh. It's going in your mouth. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, if you just excuse me for a second, just trying to post this on the Twits. I don't know how much of the background. Being, huh? I was going to say, I don't know how much of the background noise they can hear, but. Probably not. It's noise cancellation. Oh, it just okay. captures our our voices and the sizzlings of the chicken. The chicken. The chicken. So they won't hear the gunshots and the helicopters and. Yeah. Pew, pew. The roosters and the chickens. And yes. <laughs> the Our bus son. Did you say yes now? Mr. Pants. Poopy Mr. Pants. Pants. No, it's Mr. Pants, no. not Mr. Poopy Pants. It is Poopy Pants. He poops everywhere. He's a famous rooster that I post on my stories. <laughs> <laughs> That's our son, Pants. <laughs> mm. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him. i seen him. Not yesterday, but the day before. He yeah. was patrolling the estate. <laughs> yes, he was. The estate, the estate grounds. <laughs> yeah, the compound. <laughs> yes. Yes. So how are you feeling, babe? As far as what? Just how are you feeling today? Just in general. Mm-hmm. I feel old. You feel old. I do feel old. OMG, why do you feel old? I don't know, my body. Well, I've been having, I've been dealing with a knee issue for what, like a year now? Mm. And um, (laughs) I know how to fix it. It's just, you know, hard to fix myself. But I started doing that yesterday. I started fixing myself two, three days ago now. And it sucks because it's going to hurt before it gets better. So. I'm on no medication. Okay, here's the thing. I don't take pills, so even Tylenol affects me. And I've been taking some pain medication for my knee, which it helps, right? It does It does work, but I don't like taking pills. I don't want to depend on them, which I felt like I was getting to that point where I was only comfortable when I would take the pill. So I was like, no, nah, I got to fix this. So then I started fixing it. I haven't taken any pills. Again, it sucks because my body just hurts. But I know I'll be okay. I just got to continue stretching and fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. But aside from feeling old and being in pain, (laughs) I'm also a little sad. Why are you sad? I'm sad today. And it's not Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's not Saturday. <laughs> it's Witness Day. Why is it spelled Witness Day? Witness? Wit- no, Witness. Like, oh, Witness. Witness. Witness Day on <laughs> Wednesday. I know. Witness Wit- Day. Witness Day. <laughs> I don't know. We should look into that. I know. But <laughs> the reason why I'm sad is because you're going back to Arizona today. Yes. I'm sad too. And I hate that mm. responsibilities gets in the way and uh, adulting 
adulting is it adulting or is it just another thing of getting old <laughs> <laughs> yeah same thing yeah i just okay if we're if we're gonna make this about that i feel like because my entire life i've been traveling and i feel like all the um like when you're traveling at least for me like i get impatient and then i have things wrong with me like you know mm -hmm. like my stomach issues and stuff and then it's being more tired quickly and feeling like you gotta rest mm -hmm. and like you're you're sitting down driving for how many hours and as you're sitting your legs are getting swollen mm -hmm. and then when you get out of the car you're just stiff you're stiff Mm -hmm. oh, what are you gonna say <laughs> no i was gonna say like when we stop when we stop to get gas or whatever it is we should stretch but it's like oh as soon as we get off the car we gotta go do what we're doing and then we're coming back and let's go i don't know why we do that <laughs> like i thought it was interesting when you said that you get you and your dad don't like to pull over to rest because it's like you gotta pass the same cars all over again mm -hmm. and that's kind of funny because i've thought about that before but yeah, we should get off the car. We should stretch out a little bit if it's possible. If you're at like a rest area or something, like jog a little bit. But again, we just rush out of the car, do our business, and rush back in to get back on the road. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, that's how blood clots happen. And that's how, you know. And we were looking that up today, yeah. too. We were looking up, um, um, well, I thought it was vitamin K that would would act like a blood thinner mm -hmm. for blood clots that you already have yeah. but when we were talking <clears throat> more about it rob said it was you know vitamin k for let's see if you cut yourself you Quite clot minutes. up you clot faster yeah. so it's like okay and <laughs> what's funny too is that <laughs> i'm getting you know i'm 39 now i had a birthday on the 12th and it's like okay i have very close to veins <laughs> but it's really like yeah i don't know like it's just things that you notice about your body so it's like yeah traveling today i'm gonna have swollen ass legs you know i'm gonna be stiff you know um trying to have my stomach settle down i can't eat um you know i could snack which is i'm happy about the pretzels that you got me thank we're you we're gonna have to get you some more because yeah i don't know we still have some mm -hmm. <laughs> what <laughs> i got up to flip the chicken yeah he's hopefully he's it's not too, the, too long. Chick, the chicken the chicks chicken, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that's his ringtone according to you <laughs> flipping the chicks mm. Ow. you stop that <laughs> <laughs> i'm not the one that says it it's you mm. <laughs> no we're good smells really good though it better be good because i've never done it this way it's a seasoning that smells really good well yeah. yeah so there's a reason why we're um chalky um about <laughs> being old <laughs> because we're old for one Man. um <laughs> you're like i'm 30 i just turned turned 39 i'm like damn it wait until you hit 40. that's when the pain <laughs> really hits <laughs> you know somebody said that one time they were talking and they were like oh my dad said once you hit 40 that's when the pain starts mm -hmm. i think i was 37 at the time when i heard that and I was like, that's not true. <laughs> Man, I hit 40 and I was like, ow, <laughs> my knee, oh, my back. You know what's interesting mm -hmm. is that, remember, um, was it like three or four days ago that Dina sent us, Dina Joe from the Dina Joe podcast, I'll post a link that way you guys can check out her podcast on Spotify. But um, she sent us an article and a video of what, did you see it? I don't think I showed no. it to you. Okay, <laughs> sorry, but she Having sent me an article. in the kitchen, <laughs> cooking, cleaning. 
I read. No, just kidding. Go ahead. Um, that um, yeah, it it was it was um old men that pretty much had like a like a beer belly. So basically, they transform their bodies to like muscular and there's like a big ass fucking thing that you know that they could like jump off mm-hmm. jump on yeah the and this dude was like 70 something i think and then he jumped from there to like up here mm. but like you see the before and after pictures and it's just like dang like you know it's it's they're reversing everything and when i went out to get the stuff from the car when i was coming back it's so weird but like I was wondering if there's a chance that we could reverse our things, you know, like not just like um, like vitamins and things, but the natural stuff, mm-hmm. and of course physical discipline and discipline when you're eating at the table. But it's like I feel like where I come from, like when I look at my family tree, we're all like, first of all, as natives, we we're built hella funny. Like <laughs> there's no fucking native that can tell me different. Like we're we're shaped funny. Like you know whether we're we're you know chunky, thin, fat. Like we're we're just built a certain way. And it's like I've never really known like my aunts and my uncles to be fit. Yeah, thin only because they were starving to death. Mm. Like you know coming from a poor family, but. I just look at my, like my cousins, right? I look at my cousins and, you know, I have a cousin that's half Hopi, half Mexican. I have a cousin that is half Hopi, half Hawaiian. Um, And they're very, you know, it's more of the other ethnicity than it is Hopi. Mm -hmm. So their bodies are a lot more fit than us that are full Hopi. Mm -hmm. So, and those guys, you know, like my, my other cousins, they're all in baseball. They're all like, you know, basketball. They're all like, you know, running track, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, they're all athletic. Like they, they do stuff. Yeah. Um, and we don't, <laughs> you know, us that are, that are full Hopi. And it is, it is, I'm curious about that. And it's like, okay, well, what proof do you need when they're fit, you know, other ethnicity, and we're not, and we're full? So, do you think that's genetic or cultural? I think it's a cultural thing. Yeah. I think that's what everybody would say. Yeah. Um, the only ways that that Hopi people, if we are big, the only way that we would slim down is obviously if you get hurt and they're telling you oh you can't have fry bread and we don't even eat fry bread that's other tribes but it's either that or you're getting old you you just don't your stomach is shrinking um it's not from working out in the fields like how it used to be Mm -hmm. but it's like yeah it's because we're just old that's why i don't believe the the diet the lose the the weight loss commercials mm-hmm. like Jenny Craig and Slim Fast, and it's like, oh, I used to be this many pounds and this many inches around, and now I'm down this much. And it's like, look at yourself, you're old. Mm-hmm. You're just old. You're old. It's not. It's not the Slim Fast. It's not Insure. It's not Jenny Craig. Mm-hmm. That you're old. <laughs> like I want to see a, a 21 year old doing a commercial. Mm-hmm. Put it in the chat if you agree. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to be old. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just don't lose weight, man. We're PT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. But it's just it's just the other stuff. Like, like uh, I'm sure me being diabetic, I'm pretty sure it does. It'll hit me a lot more faster. As far as like, you know, um, like just being more numb or like, you know, eyesight, mm-hmm. you know, because being diabetic, your, your eyesight, um, you know, your, the nerves in your legs and your feet, you got to have balance, you know, you stumble more, mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, just, you know, not saying that this is a diabetic thing, but you're just more tight, you're more stiff. Um, and if you don't work out for a day or two, you know, I've noticed that it's like, I could do a whole week going to the gym. I take one or two days off and it's like, I'm stumbling mm -hmm. and it's like, damn, like I thought, I thought I was good. <laughs> I thought <laughs> if, if I do a week, I'm good for a week. Yeah. No, that doesn't happen. But it's just all of these things like, man, like we're fucking getting old. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to the physical part before we get into the mental states of getting old, like forgetting stuff? Oh my God. Oh, that was, that was on spaces. But yeah, we'll post a link to spaces <laughs> about being regretful, but it's a little explicit because oh, it was on Twitter spaces. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. What's that then? I said no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we said it all. When it comes to the physical part? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to get into the mental state of getting old. <laughs> aging. <laughs> yeah, aging. Sorry. Um, okay, so of course we want to um, talk about the three qualities. Now, I'm reading an, a, a title of an article. The article says, and I'll, and I'll post a link to this as well. Um, three qualities of people who achieve great things later in life, according to psychology. Okay, so let me read that again. Three qualities, listen up people. Three qualities of people who achieve great things later in life. And I think that's important because I've talked to a, a few people that were it didn't sound like they've really given up on life it was more like what else is there what else is there to achieve mm -hmm. i'm already um I, i'm already like a, a loving wife i'm already you know a mother i'm already a great grandmother mm -hmm. i'm already you know a successful something you mm -hmm. know i already bought my houses i've had my cars and it's almost like what else is there right mm. and i think they just i think that's a way of keeping themselves in that age bracket that that's how you're supposed to feel and when they say it it don't sound like it's an accomplishment they say like oh i've already done everything mm -hmm. there's no like like i'm proud of it it's just like oh i've done it so um in this article um this person let's see i want to make sure i credit the writer um mal james and we're just gonna let's see he mentioned a few things i'll, I'll name three things that he that he um said and it's kind of like whoa i didn't know that but um Let's see. He says, um, it seems a lot of people who do great things in older years than we might expect. Um, it says, let me see. Um, Ray Kroc um, started McDonald's at the age of 52. Thanks, Ray Kroc, for fattening <laughs> us up. <laughs> Thank you for McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, the next one is um, having retired as a public school teacher, Frank Court wrote the phenomenal Angela's Ashes and published it at 66. And I was wanting to look that up on Audible mm -hmm. and see if that's something that I want to listen to. Um, let's see. Fa, fa, faja, faja, sing. Um, started running at the young age of 89. He ran his first marathon when he was 90. 
making him the oldest marathon runner in the world. He continued running until he was 100 years old. At 109 years old, he published a children's book. So I think that's pretty sick. Yes, it is. You know, and, and the whole point of that is that they still continue to do stuff. So um, back to the title of this article, again, the three qualities of people who achieve great things later in life. The first one is they aren't afraid of failure. Um, and I'm going to read this first sentence. It says, fear is such a powerful emotion, and being afraid to fail can really hold us back, young or old. Thoughts, babe? Do you think, it's more of a question than a thought, but do you think that it's easier as an older person to just be like, I don't care. I, like, failure is not going to stop me. I've already gone through a lot of stuff, and failed and nothing has happened like i think people are scared to fail because they think or they feel like all oh, life is over if you fail mm -hmm. and then when you do fail and life isn't over it's almost like oh okay i'm not afraid to fail anymore i've already done it it's happened i survived it now what else so mm -hmm. they lose the fear of fear <laughs> if that makes any sense yes of failing i guess so i think and in the article, and I don't know if you're going to touch on it, but they talk about how younger people or or people view younger people as like YOLO type shit. Like, oh, who cares? You know, I don't have kids and I don't have responsibilities that stop me from doing things that I want to do. So it's mm -hmm. almost the same thing. Like it's, it's the middle aged people that have or feel like they can't take those same risks as younger people and older people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's something that comes with age, like like that. I think that's what the article is saying. At least that's what I got from it. Is you lose the fear of failing, but does that come with age, or does that like does it come? Does it depend on your responsibilities, like how much you have to lose and stuff like that, or is it just I don't know. That's I guess I don't know if that's if it touches on that or not, or what you got from that. Mm hmm. Well, I don't want to take it away from the physical or the emotion, but I think um, most of the younger generation, their fear is more money. Mm -hmm. Money is, their, their fears are kicked off with money, from money. Mm -hmm. um, the older generation, um, I don't want to say that they had things easier because you know, we were we were just watching Little House on the Prairie, and remember they were like, "Oh yeah, we got this job, and you know, it's paying it's paying a dollar." <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> you know, I think a price of chalk back then was like a like one penny. Yeah. You know, when you watch Little House on the Prairie, but I mean, it's. I think it's maybe the expectation. For the younger generation, that's what puts that fear. But also, you have every single young, young, like the young generation, their first thing that they say is, oh, I have anxiety. So oh. it, everything now is like mental health. But that's what we're trying to focus on with the older generation, you know, us. <laughs> oh, shit, we're there. <laughs> yeah, we're oh, there. no. <laughs> and see that's that's mindset but i've said this in plenty of wine run episodes where i have said i've been rejected mm -hmm. so many times whether it be like telling my crush in fourth grade that i had a crush on on him and then them just being like oh well i don't like you you're ugly what the fuck? Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I guess I'm ugly. But, you know, it's it's the many years of rejection of, you know, crushes, even wanting to hang out with, with, the, with the cool crowd rejection, um, getting answers wrong in, in the classroom felt like rejection. 
um, when the teachers were supposed to help you. Hopefully this isn't too long, and if it is, I apologize, people. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm cooking. Um, you know, teachers are supposed to help you, and then they don't. Like, they're just like, like, whatever at you. Mm. It feels like rejection. So it's like, it's it's all of these things. And um, it may be a different type of rejection, but it's almost like, well, you're never going to know until you try it. Mm. So, yeah, like when you look at number one, it says they aren't afraid of failure. So it's almost like, okay it's understanding that if something doesn't work out you can always try again um it's it's um something that i repeated repeatedly had to do was when i was in ged class and of course my my shittiest subject ever was um math still is um it did make things a little bit more easier to understand failure only because they said that, okay, if you fail the math test, you can re-prep and take it again. And it's like, okay, well, when if I fail that one? <laughs> and it's like, Oh, well, you can still retake it. The only thing is, is that the first test that you take, we're paying for it. But if you fail and if you have to take a retest, you know, a second test, you're going to have to pay for it. And it's like, okay, well, how much? Oh, it's only $25 to retake. And it's like, oh, okay, well, then I'll just do that just in case. So it's, it's, I would say don't be afraid of failure because if you fail you can you can do it again. I think that's the part that people don't tell them. Like it's just like okay, we want you to go to college and we expect you to to finish it. Okay, well, I'll finish it, but it might take me longer because I have to pay off these student loans or you know i gotta get a roommate or you know i have a child on the way you know i hope it's not like that but it's it's feeling like you've already failed and you didn't even start mm -hmm. and that's where that part says fear is such a powerful emotion and being afraid to fail can really hold us back young or old mm -hmm. but i think losing the fear of fear comes with age and experience so older people don't really have the fear because and that's another thing well, i guess we're talking about the mental part of it. <laughs> um is older people i don't know why you consider old but older people feel like okay my time is running now what do i have to lose if i'm still gonna die might as well do it like they've already had to work, they've already gone to school, they've already done all the things that responsible adults have to do. Now it's like retirement is just a fun time. And that's when they get to like really dedicate time to themselves. And that's probably when they have the time to write these books and do all these. I'm not saying because I think they talk about um, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. and all the younger ones like Steve Jobs and that they, they did some amazing at things. At a young age, yeah, twenty-one, nine years old. Yeah. Mozart, posing at eight years old. Yeah, what the fuck? yeah, but we <laughs> don't know. Like a right there. We don't know their circumstances, though. We don't know how much time and how much support and how much of anything they had. True, because I started DJing when I was ten years old, and I started woodworking when I was seven. But it was like my my family has started it already. I was already. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, being taught, shown, and then doing it. Mm -hmm. So I would say I was a success at seven years old. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's. It, um, and I, I think it's a little different too. Like you taking on the family business, or you having been exposed to something that that oh, I like that. I like doing art. Let me do that. Versus you trying to figure out what the passion is and what you like. 
what what you want to do when you grow up. Because that like we come from the era where um it's like oh you have to go to school and get a job because you have to help out or you have your own family and you have responsibility. So you don't you don't get to live out your dreams yet. You gotta mm-hmm. do all these adult things first and then you get to you get to do that. And now we live in a in a era and a generation where the younger kids are already millionaires. They're doing YouTube, they're doing TikTok, they're doing all these social media things that are making the money. They don't have to go through the struggle of oh I have to go to school. I have to go to college. I have to get a regular paying job. Like they have all the freedom financial freedom that we didn't have growing up. In my case I had to grow up too soon. I had to become like head of household and responsible of my house that I didn't have a chance to be like, what do I want to be when I grow up? I'm already mm-hmm. a parent. I'm raising my parents. I'm raising my siblings. Like I have to grow up. I don't Wait, get a chance. Does that come from because your parents were from Mexico and you were like, you know, the translator in English? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that where that comes from? It's part of it. I think. For my parents, they're they're feeling, like like you were the outlet for them to communicate with the world to get the things that they need here in America. Not just that, but I feel like they thought our only responsibility is to keep you guys alive by working, by providing for you guys. They didn't have time to sit with us and like help us with our homework and like, oh, how do you feel today? Can you talk about your feelings? Like we didn't have any of that shit. Yeah. We had like no. As soon as you start walking, you figure out what you want to do because that's what you're gonna do for work. I was collecting cans as a kid when I was out playing and bringing them home, and I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. I was just bringing them home because that's what I was told. Or because it would be out and you see the can on the floor, pick it up. I didn't know that they were recycling. And you're thinking money. that you're saving the planet? No, I not was no. I made it a, a I made it a fun thing to do. Like, oh, okay, let's go collect more. I would go further out and I would, but again, it wasn't like, oh, you guys are bringing this or that we could um, recycle this to get money. Yeah, oh my gosh. And, like, I have to, in a way, forgive my parents too because they, they didn't have time to be not just adults and parents. They had to be adults, they had to be workers, and they had to be responsible for providing. Mm-hmm. Then they didn't get freedom of like let me come home and chill with my kids. It was like, oh I gotta do this and I gotta do that and I have to go to sleep because I have to get up at four in the morning to go to work. So do I you know. think the struggles are still the same from your parents' time as to compare to like like your brother's household? I see my nephews and my niece and they don't have anything to do with You don't they I don't think my niece Ever up until now, now she's stressing about it. Now she's 18, but even now, like she still has support from a, from a mom and from my brother. It's not like as soon as you turn 14, you need to start looking for a job. I think that's the legal age here in California to start working to get a part time or whatever at 14. I started working, like I said, I was already doing stuff like that when I was a kid, and then I started babysitting and I started like. My cousins and stuff like that. It, it was funny because it wasn't like a real job, but I was getting money for it. So it was is that okay? I don't I'm know. just asking. <laughs> yeah, <I guess> so. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken is burnt. It's um, burnt. It's old. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't. I I don't think I can still to this day tell you what my hobbies were or are. Like, what is it that I would have done if somebody was asking me, like, what what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. You didn't, they, I don't they remember. Never, did they ask you that as a kid? I'm sure in school they asked us, but I don't remember what They're I said. They're like, I like pizza. <laughs> I want to work. I want money. That's what I want. No, I don't remember if I ever, what my answer was. And I don't remember what my passion as a kid was. I know that I've always been into music. I've always been into books and researching and shit, writing. stuff like that. But writing, learning, <laughs> learning, learning. <laughs> but other than Got that, you. it's not like I want to make a career out of this. I want to make a make money from this, or you know, I didn't have those aspirations. I was just work. Well, at that age, you're 
you shouldn't be thinking about it, but you come from a household where it's like, that's all you guys did was, mm -hmm. was work. I mean, I guess it was kind of like that for me. Like everybody thought that I was spoiled just because I was the only girl. And it's like, no, <laughs> my brothers were spoiled, not me. Mm -hmm. That's. Um, I was going to say something. You brought it up and I was going to talk about. I don't remember now, see, because I'm old. My brain. <laughs> no, okay. Um, I don't even know how old I am. I'm like 42, 43. So to me, I feel like I'm already in my 80s. I'm done. I'm old. I'm done. <laughs> put me out. Well, you need to read this article again. <laughs> uh, no, I need to put it into practice, and I need to change my mindset. But yeah, the jobs that I've had have been hard labor. It's not like you know. I was gonna. It was gonna sound as a dig to the people now, but I didn't have an, an office job, and it's not that I couldn't have because I know computer stuff and I know IT stuff, and I can take things apart and put them back together. But it's not what I wanted to do. It's not. I didn't feel like that was a, an option for me. It's like, oh, you got to go to wherever they're paying the most. And right now it's hard labor at this factory job. So that's where you're going. So even though I was in my teens and 20s, I still felt not just physically, but mentally, I felt way older than that. And I think that's why now, like my mom tells me sometimes we'll talk and she's like, what are you going to do when you get to my age? I want to see you when you get to my age. I'm like, I don't want to be at your age. <laughs> no shade, but shit, I'm not trying to. I can just imagine the pain that I'm going to be in. But I do believe that this article is right. It is the mindset. You can change it. You can change your outlook on how you see things and change your life. Yes. I just, I wouldn't want people to to feel um, like there's like there's nothing, like there's nothing else. Um, you know, there's there's people that that are out there, let's say, volunteering. You know, whether it's um, you know cleaning up the planet or it's volunteering at a uh, children's hospital or. Um, what is it like um the pound mm -hmm. you know something shelters. yeah shelters. shelters there you go um homeless you know homeless people you know uh soup kitchens there's there's things that you could do i mean you could go to your to your city and be like hey i want to help pick up garbage on the on the side of the highway don't mean i have to commit a crime just to <laughs> be a convict <laughs> and yeah. wear all orange and pick up <laughs> highway <Right>. litter <laughs> But you know there there are things that you could do. Um, you know it's um, yeah. I would say do do some research if you if you wanted to pick up learning how to woodwork, for instance. I only say woodwork because I know how to do it, and I want to be doing it for for as long as I can. And it it does suck because um, you know the fear of my illnesses it does hold me back from doing um, woodworking. You know, like feeling like I have to have certain things in order to do it, you know, because remember when you were with me, we tried cutting wood and I was like, I don't even have this. I don't have this. I don't have mm -hmm. this. And it's like, OK, well, plan your next run out home, get your shit, come back and do it. Mm -hmm. And it's just I I could have had that mindset and I didn't. So I feel like. Okay, the only one that's holding myself back is is me. It's it's my own fear, um, and I've let it go for a couple years. Mm. And it's like, okay, well, what what could I be doing? But see, I could be doing. I know so. I know how to do so many things, and it's like, it's it's like mm -hmm. I I have to learn by doing a cast and look at how long it takes it took so it's if there's something that you guys want to learn i would say do it try it even if you have multiple failures if you, even if you want to pick up crocheting you know maybe you're not supposed to be crocheting but maybe pick up knitting mm -hmm. knitting is harder let me just say but 
um it's is don't give up i taught myself how to crochet nobody taught me how to crochet and i learned from a book i didn't have youtube mm. youtube wasn't around um i'm that old <laughs> <laughs> Ah. All right, let's move on to number two. Oh no, we're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> I thought yeah. we were done. You want to do this in in segments? No. It's okay. We no, can cut this one and then start another one. Huh? We've said that before. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we still got to go back to those ones. Okay, yeah. very quickly. Number two is they see themselves as younger than they really are. That's the mindset. <laughs> huh? I'm 12. No, I'm 42, but I act 12. But I feel like I'm 80. <laughs> See? <laughs> See why I can't get it together? You're fine. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not. I don't feel fine. You're what? I said I don't feel fine. Um. Okay, you said that you were 43? Mm-hmm. How young do you feel? Like feel, like your, like my mindset. Your mindset. I don't <laughs> want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> Let's say my mindset versus my maturity level. <laughs> so I'm immature, like a seven-year-old, but I feel more like a, I don't know, thirteen. You feel thirteen. Yeah. Like I feel Do you young, feel that way because of... what's that? What did you say? No, what did you it's say? It's not good for you two. I'll tell you later. <laughs> I think I know what you're gonna say. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um let's see. I'm trying to snag the link so I can okay, that's not that's not good. Okay. Um do you think that um remember when we talk about being jolted mm -hmm. at a certain age you know like that stupid fat Can canadian bitch right like she acts like she's 16. But and, she's, and she's 40. Though. right but do you think that when we say it because we are conscious of our of ourselves uh we're not reckless like that but do you think you saying that you feel 13? I feel do you like think I'm, that that I'm sorry. do you think that you pick that because that's where um uh, like trauma possibly and do you have traumas at 13 years old and if you do you want to say it if you don't want to say it, we can talk about it later well i'm sure you and i have talked about this um trying to think back at what age because you have to remember i started driving at 11 years old and i'm talking about on the road i'm not talking about just hey can you go move the car outside i was on the road driving at 11 years old so by the age of 13 everybody knew that i was driving and that i had a car so i was everybody's best friend because i could take them places we could go cruising we could go do things that we weren't supposed to be doing at our age so even though I was still doing grown up things at a young age, I feel like now I get to, I get to, I get a chance to live or think sometimes, not always, how I should have back then. When I, when I say that I feel like um, a 13 year old mentally like, or I guess spiritually, like I feel young, I feel like like innocent is what I'm trying to say, I guess. <laughs> the innocence of a 13 year old, like discovering new things and feeling like being able to feel your feelings and, you know, being moody sometimes and like knowing that it's probably, you know, you're going through puberty or whatever it is, right? But like now I understand that back then I didn't. Mm -hmm. And again, I didn't have the chance to sit around and be like why am i sad today like no i had to be working and i had to be doing stuff so i didn't have that chance so like you're feeling all these things as an adult for the first time almost almost but with the wisdom and the knowledge of like i'm not stunted i'm mm -hmm. not acting like a 13 year old mm -hmm. i'm still responsible like a, like my real true age but i'm innocent 
in the mindset of a 13 year old. Like I'm discovering new things and I'm finally being able to like see things for what they are when it comes to like nature and stuff. Like, you know, seeing a ladybug made me happy today. That's yes. something that at 13 years old, I didn't have the freedom to do because I wasn't out there doing 13 year old kid things. Yeah. I was doing adult stuff. I didn't have a chance to look at nature and be like, oh shit, like, you know? So that's what I mean. I don't feel like, I'm not saying, I'm just throwing my hands up in the air and saying, oh, I want to be a kid again. And like, no, you gotta grow up, you know? Yeah. So I am responsible, like my age. I am mature, like my age, but I still keep that childlike innocence, I guess. Yeah, like, like 13 year old jokes you know person yes, yeah. because you do say off the wall shit it is very funny it is very like immature yes. like and yeah like that's that's something that um i feel like a lot of kids these eight these days they're not even like they don't have a personality yeah they don't have the personalities that we had as you know growing up yeah they're just dead inside straight face <laughs> they don't even know how to smile yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, okay. So the last one is okay, number three. They nurture their connections. Mm. What does that mean? Does that mean like you're you cherish and you value your connections with people? Mm-hmm. Okay, I do that. I do that more than the people around me, or the the or with the people that you're trying to converse with, they don't give it back. Yeah. Yeah, I it's almost it. like um, um, I don't know if I've seen it in a YouTube video or if it was like a like a TikTok, but it said something like, like oh, when you're in college try to be friends with kids that are going to school to be a lawyer be friends with kids that are wanting to be in real estate or you know like all the you know and it, yeah, it almost sounds crooked you know it's just yeah. kind of like okay so you're gonna try to have the one up over everybody out there in general in the world it almost seems unfair because it's almost like in schools they should be teaching us about finances but they're not and they're teaching math wrong i've seen the loopholes on tiktok <laughs> when it comes to uh dividing and they multiplication. Make it way harder than yeah than it has the to long be. way around oh. i feel like in ancient times <laughs> i feel <laughs> old now i feel like it's always been that way though like when you take it back to like um when there was villages and it took a village to to work together and everything they didn't have a bunch of it people like the whole village wasn't a professional at fixing a wheel you know they all had different professions they all had different things that they were good at and that's what kept the village and, and the tribe um functioning mm -hmm. you don't want to have a bunch of tire repair people around you because you only you're only gonna use that to a certain extent. You need to have different variety in your tribe to mm -hmm. be able to survive. Because you do get to the age and to the point where you don't want new friends. You don't want to allow new people in. So if you start building your connections and your your little network of friends early on, and like the you said it was a YouTube video or something. Yeah, something or somewhere I saw that um where you do have someone that has that can do those things real estate um financing and all these other professions and you keep that in your tribe that doesn't mean it's only for you guys you get to help other people but that's the core of your tribe and that's something that we all need i was reading i was reading a book and I've been reading a lot of books and they all say the same shit and it all comes down to the same thing. You have to value the connections that you have. We're not meant to be isolated. We're not meant to be by ourselves, to ourselves. We're supposed to help 
our neighbor, our neighbors, our community, our tribe. That's what we're supposed to. That's how we are built. We're built for that. We're not built to just be on a lazy couch with, you know, a TV in front of us or a screen in front of us. We're supposed to be out in nature and doing all these things, but it's just we let that we let them take over. Who's them? I don't know. <laughs> them is whoever you want to call it, but yeah, we need to be able to to have that network of friends and family and just connections. And I feel like that's what that that part is talking about. It. I just don't want it to for it to sound like you have to step, like be friends with people to step on these people, the same people to get ahead, you know. And that's that. Hopefully, that's seemed, not what it's saying. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, again, if you read the title, three qualities of people who achieve great things later in life. Okay, so to achieve great thing to achieve great things later in life, all right. Well what what does that mean when you know, like they value they value what relationships? Yeah. Um well, of course, I'm always gonna want to look at it on the peaceful side. Like, like what is befriending people? Like, keeping those connections, those relationships. What does that do for an older generation? Other than, like, oh, back in my day, this was how it was. And like, is it is it the the memories? Is it the knowledge knowledge of what? Because knowledge obviously is has changed. You know, like back then it was a certain way. Now it's completely different. It's either better or it's worse. Like the future was, the future is better and it's worse. So it's like, okay, um, taking it back to cherishing those relationships. I wonder what that looks like. Because it doesn't really explain. Well, think of it. Um... If you're, if you're a person that's using other people as stepping stones to get to the top, you're going to be by yourself at the top. If you're... People would rather have that. Yeah, but days. it's lonely at the top. Everybody says that. Everybody knows that. At some I point, see that. <laughs> at some point, you're going to have to turn back around and look at the people that you hurt to get to where you are and apologize to them because they're still there. They're still part of your, <laughs> your, of your face. Yeah, but, I mean... I, I'm I'm speaking. Okay, let's take this into consideration. It's almost like look at who you're telling. Like like you know, for me, ex for an example, there are people that are content. They are okay with being alone. You know, because it, it's it's we are like like okay, me. I have everything that I can need, other than you know let's say like money or like a job right and and i feel like that be the only thing that i'm that i'm missing is that uh you know income coming in right whether how i do it whether i go out and get a w2 or i stay at home and doing it mm -hmm. um it's almost like um it's almost like monk status like like a monk don't need anything. Mm. A monk knows how to take care of himself. You know, he has all natural resources. You know, mm. if the world would have come to an end, he'd be good. While all of us are killing and eating each other's like steaks, you know, mm. like but it's like when you tell someone that that is secure, like that's not just saying it because if that's almost like us saying that to like a monk. Like, oh, you can't be alone. And it's like, yes, I can. Oh no, you can't. Oh yes, I can. No. You really can't. And and see that that's that's it is insulting. But it's like, okay, older generation, we know what we need. And we're we're using we've used our younger years to achieve those things, stability, right? Um you take away retirement. It's it's almost like it's not really there. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like all the money that you put away into retirement, you know, it, it's almost like you like you overpaid in taxes. So it's like, okay, let's just not give it to taxes. But it's like our lack 
in younger years is why they're just like, oh, you're young. You're not going to put away for your taxes. You're not going to put away for your retirement. So we're going to keep this, capitalize on you working for your family, but you're really working for us. So it's like, okay, what about other people that don't trust banks? And they're like, oh, I, I keep it. I, I keep it home. But they're, they're, they somehow still know because of how much money that you received in your entire life. It's still it's still calculator, so you're not really holding anything. But I know we're going into something else. <laughs> but my whole thing is is that if a person has everything and they know how to get their their resources, it's like is is what's what's relationships other than your family? So that's why I know I tend to go way out like who are they talking about and it's like oh well, they can mean anybody and it's like okay that needs to be specified <laughs> what i feel like because again i've read a lot of books i've even in movies i've seen it there is not one person that i've seen on their deathbed say i regret not making more money i regret not buying the house or that car or having more fun what they regret is the time that they wasted on not spending time with their family, not spending time with their friends, not nurturing the connections that they that they could have had. So they're on their deathbed and they're dying alone. Yeah, they could be surrounded in a, like a mansion with all their money and all their possessions, but they're not. That doesn't mean shit. And mm -hmm. at some point, you get to an age where none of that stuff means anything. It is the people that you can go on vacation with. It is the person that you can call at 3 a.m. in the morning and say, hey, my heart is beating a weird way. Can you just come stay with me? It, it's the connections that you make with people. Mm -hmm. So whether that's your neighbor or your sister or a person that you met in college, it, it doesn't matter who the person is. It's still a connection to a person. So yeah, mm -hmm. the monk might be able to survive on his own, but he doesn't want to do it on his own. Like. You know, I, I've said it, I know you've said it, I'm comfortable with being alone. I'm okay with being alone. I'm okay with not having someone with me. But now I do have someone with me. Do I want to give you back and say, like, I can still survive without you? Could I? Yes. Do I want to? No. I don't want to do this because none of, nothing has any meaning. Like, cooking has no meaning if you don't have someone that's going to eat it with you. Right? Mm hmm you can collect all the money you want, but what the fuck does it really mean if you have no one to spend it with, no one to have fun mm. with, no one to do stuff with that is bringing them happiness? Like mm. when you buy stuff and like you buy me food, right? Like this morning, you bought me something that you know I like. We ate it. And it was it was good, right? Yeah, it was and enjoyable. It made, it made you happy just knowing that I enjoyed it. Yeah. So it is the little things, but it is what the kind of like. Just imagine that same scenario, but I'm not there eating it with you. See, mm -hmm. it's the connections that you're making. And again, it doesn't have to be a love partnership. It could be a friend. It could be a neighbor. It could be just anyone that you could call up and be like, hey, I need you right now. Can you come over? And that they're willing to do that because if you step on people to get to the top, those people aren't going to be there for you when you need them or when you want them. They, they were already there. You, you chose to fuck them over. They're not going to be there for you anymore. Mm -hmm. So again, nurturing the connections that you that you have or that you make means being available for someone that needs you at three or four in the morning. Mm -hmm. Someone that needs you to sit with them when they're losing a family member. You know, just being there for them. But again, that's the connection that you're making with people. You're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna get that from a tablet or a device or money or coat or whatever people are it is. trying people They're are trying, trying to, to replace people with things with and AI. it's it's a it's a lonely place to be and they'll they'll figure it out they'll get to the point where they're like oh this thing can't give me the emotional support i need what happened <laughs> no is my phone my phone is getting hot and i wonder why it's like i want to know what. Uh, no but okay first of all the article needs to be needs to be specific i should have written it Huh? I should have written it. All right. Well, you're coming out with your own black soon. <laughs> <gasps> what? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but I guess for I guess the reason why I went that route is because 
um, I was convinced at one time in my life that I was going to be alone for the rest of my life. And it was like, okay, well, I'm cool with that mm -hmm. because I have this many houses. I have things, you know, and um, I am materialistic. I, I do like things. Things make me happy. And when, and when people say, oh, money don't make you happy, pfft, those yeah, come from people that don't have money. But money does make me happy. It does. You know, I, it, it, it feels good to, to have it because I guess for a lonely person, it, it's security. Hold on. When you say that you're a materialistic person and that money makes you happy, I think for a person to really be that, it would be like, would you trade all the money in the world for your dad? Like if somebody said, give me your dad and I'll give you all the money in the world. Give me your mom and I'll give you all the houses in the world. That's very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a hard no. <laughs> oh no, I'm not secure. <laughs> you gonna sell it's me? Not, <laughs> what are you gonna sell me for? It's not real. You know, that's why I answer in that way. Don't make me fucked up. It's just I don't see that happening. But of course, of course, I would want my parents. You know, I love them. But again, as a as a single person an individual you know it, it, i didn't say me and my family we you know it, it was me like it, it's all me mm -hmm. um and i'm pretty sure i sound like somebody that's trying to deal make <laughs> deals with the devil right. <laughs> like i didn't say yeah. <laughs> no but um it's um, almost my fifth. Okay, well, we got to end this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> soon. <laughs> yeah, we got to end it very, very soon. But um, no, it's, it's, it's as an individual, that's how I felt. It's like, you know, I have my houses. I have, I have my things, right? Um, and I do, I do enjoy my money because I worked for it. Mm -hmm. It's not like, Oh, like I'm, I'm money hungry. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. No. It's, it's, I'm going to enjoy what I make. I'm going to enjoy the things that I got. And, you know, if, if that makes me a, a very bad person, wait till you have it and then you lose it. You know, you think, work hard for it. I don't think it makes you a bad <clears throat> person. I think when you say, or I guess when you're painting that picture of you being materialistic and, and choosing, materialistic things over people that's there are people that way there are people that have been offered millions of dollars to leave their family and they do it mm -hmm. or you'll get a mansion if you but you're gonna live by yourself and you see it all the time but there are people that choose things over people mm -hmm. and you're not that type of person so that's why i guess i kind of have an issue with you labeling yourself a materialistic person because it, it kind of puts that impression in people that you would give up a, a person to have some a thing no my, my my version of materialistic is you working hard for something and getting what you want mm -hmm. instead of someone being like like oh i don't think you should have that car and mm -hmm. it's like why i work for it i want the car that's why i work that's why i have the money and i'm gonna buy it get yeah. the fuck out of my way yeah. That's to me. It's that. That's the materialistic that I mean. Yeah. Is that I worked far hard for it, and it, it does take me back to it, it. My dad. You know, we've we've had two conversations where, you know, my dad says like, "Oh, I worked. You know, I made this much money. I want this. I can't have it. Where did all my money go? Mm -hmm. See, like, and it's like, uh, I don't want to be that way." I want, you know, because I grew up working for myself at a very young age, at seven years old. And it's like I made 500 bucks with, with, with the stuff that I made, that I painted with my two hands. Mm -hmm. And I have 500 bucks. And it's like, man, I'm going to go to the movie shop. I'm going to go to Burger King. And I'm going to get me, you know, Mighty Kids meal at Burger King, you know. And this is a child. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to rent the lion king anymore i'm gonna buy the movie mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna buy like twizzlers and you know see and my mom's like no 
you go back to the it's lumber so yard, buy wood, buy paint, and you do it all over again. And you put this much into a savings account, and you can only have 20 bucks. And see, back then, 20 bucks was like 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Or more. Or more. But it was like, and, and I felt that rage. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to act out. But, you know, I was a good girl. I did what I was told. I never argued back or, you know, had a fit. But that anger was there. And it's like, why? I worked for it. Yeah. But you guys drop your comments, responses in the chat, in the comments. And thank you, babe, so much for joining me. You don't me have to cut your show I know. Off. Huh? You don't have to cut your show off. I can go to the room. Oh, what do you do? <gasps> oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I think I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah. I got what I need. <laughs> <laughs> like an money asshole. And weed. I got what I need. <laughs> I got what I need. <laughs> Just money and weed. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whoppers. <laughs> yes. No. Thank you, babe, for joining me on panel. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Yeah, and I'm sad to be going home. I'm sad to be But that doesn't stop the Y Run episodes from coming. Yes, I was sound like I'm a, I was going to see the middle of the cornfield, but no. <laughs> in the middle of the desert, next time you guys hear me. The middle of the desert? The you prison mean, not yard. in prison? Yes, the prison yard. <laughs> Maricopa. The prison yard. Isn't that where it's at? Maricopa? Yes. <laughs> in my pink jumpsuit. <laughs> they put them in pink jumpsuits in the desert. Land. Oh, they do? Yeah, that's where DMX was. Oh, shit. Yeah. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Ooh, hip hop history. That's, that's hell. <laughs> Summer in hell in that prison. You're outside. There's if no you had to choose the color jumpsuit, orange or pink, what would you choose? Orange. Orange? <laughs> Why yeah. orange? I don't look good in pink. I look too dark. <laughs> <laughs> I look too too dark. I choose pink. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. We'll talk to you guys in the next White Man Podcast Live. Y'all have a beautiful day. And <sighs> be kind, people. <laughs>